I'm so appreciative of Pastor Don to give me another opportunity to uh, to speak to you, to teach the word, and I nervously uh, add to that to preach. <laughs> Sometimes I don't like to use that word; it makes me a little nervous. Uh, but I'm here to say what God says, and. That's my prayer. That's my quick prayer that I will say only what he has to say. I do want to greet my mommy, Elaine. She's over here. I have not seen her before now for a good while. We surprised her in church in Connecticut uh, for Mother's Day 2019. And then you know what happened um, in 2020. And we are my husband and I are reaping the benefits. She actually came to see her granddaughter, who is my favorite daughter. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. I am happy that you're here to um, hear the word, those of you here in person and online. Uh, last year, a uh, pastor gave a word about reset and revealing and he kept talking about that and during that time in the latter part of the year scriptures were just uh, repeating itself it's like God was flooding me with repetition of scriptures and some of them for example fear not if you look in the if you do a search like our Professor Dean, <laughs> Reverend Stan Mack, that's what I call him. <laughs> you know, he mentioned, you know, a search and a repetition early in his uh, message. But if you do that, you will see many, many uh, verses talking about fear not. I am with you. I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I don't know what I did to deserve God flooding me with love and uh, reassurance that he was with me. Another one, be strong, be courageous, just over and over. The love of God, you know, throughout his scriptures where it's written and where you can see it, for example, in the birth of Christ, in the death of Christ, you know, in his gifts, it was just coming and coming and coming. And I couldn't get away from this repetition. So I'm adding another RE word to pass their set of words, reset, reveal, and uh, repeat. It was this constant repetition that led me to the question, Lord, why are you saying the same thing over and over again? Why? We know as educators, we know as learners that Memory, one of the easy way to memorize something is to repeat it over and over. I believe I was a very good student and I, I, I can teach people how to study. I'm a good studier. <laughs> and repetition and talking to myself is one thing that I do. And sometimes you repeat things that you don't quite understand, but you keep repeating it until you get it. You get it, right? Yes. <laughs> it brings emphasis. It can bring clarity when you repeat it in a different way and give an example, for example, um, of what you're saying. And teachers, we do this all the time. But repetition also brings confirmation. I'll talk about that. At CCCF, we repeat things a lot. We do, <laughs> right? For example... Jesus is the answer to every question. I'm pretty sure you can finish that, right? He's the solution to every problem. Exactly. We say it over and over because it is the truth. It is the truth. Some people find uh, repetition annoying. But one thing I do know is that if you want to make some muscles, you're going to have to repeat some movement and add some weight to it. If you want strength, if you want endurance, you are going to have to do it with some repetition. So that's what I'm talking about today. My topic is repeating one message and my subtopic, knowing him. Repeating one message, knowing him. My thesis statement is scripture repeats itself because it's the perpetual truth of God. Therefore, repetition of said scriptures is saying what God is saying. How many of you want to say what God is saying today? 
I want to say what God is saying. I always want to say what God is saying. In John 12, verse 49 to 50, it says, For I have not, Jesus is speaking, I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me has himself given me the commandment, what to say, what to speak, and I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I say, therefore, I say as the Father has told me. The Father himself, God himself said it. As children, sometimes when we want to impress on our siblings to do something, you know, if they don't believe us, we'll say, Mama said, Papa said, Mommy said, Okay, it brings, it adds some weight, some authority, and I see Paul doing it. Paul said, I write this in my own handwriting. Nobody else, there was no translation. He's getting it from God and he's writing it and he's sending it. Isn't it amazing to be saying the same thing that God is saying? As believers in Christ, we speak the same thing. Guess what? I'm not the first person saying this. After I wrote it, I look back in my notes. Somebody said it during the the uh, the symposium okay we say the same thing we speak the same language we speak god we speak christ it is a commandment it is not up for debate the word said it was a commandment himself given me a commandment to say what he said we should not be looking around for scripts when we have scripture. We must say what God is saying. We must say what God is saying. We must internalize it and walk this out. Um, my main text really is in Joshua, and I may go through this really fast and then talk. So Joshua 1, in Joshua 1, it says... After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the, the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over to the Jordan, you and all these people, into the land that I'm giving to them, to the people of Israel. So he's speaking to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I've given to you. And then in, in verse 4, he's telling you the area, you know, from the wilderness to as far as the river, etc. In verse 5, no man shall be able to stand before you. So he's setting it up and letting you know, yes, you're going into a strange place, but you are going to reign. I believe somebody just sang that. You are going to reign in that place. In verse 6, he says, Be strong, be courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to his father. He had said this before. He had said this before. This wasn't the first time he was saying it. He was speaking now to this wilderness. I call them the wilderness generation. There was, all of them were somewhere just uh, not yet 40, okay? Because they had been in the wilderness, except for Joshua and Caleb, were in the wilderness for 40 years, okay? These were the same people who didn't know slavery in Egypt. They were born in the wilderness. They're used to getting manna. They're used to getting uh, fed by God. Okay? They've been through some stuff. They've seen God's faithfulness. They have been disobedient. God have, have, have drawn them back to, to him. And now they're in a moment of transition. And God is so gracious to repeat and to repeat the promises to them, to tell them where they're going to inherit, to tell them to be strong and courageous. In verse 6, he said, be strong and courageous, right? In verse 7, he said the same thing again. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law, okay? The word of God. Do not turn to the right, don't turn to the left, that you may have good success, Okay, reminds you of that plumb line, right? 
reminds you of that. So if we step back into Deuteronomy, you will see that God himself had spoken already to Moses about it. And Moses spoke this message to the Israelites in Deuteronomy 31 verse 1. You know, he spoke to the Israelites. He said, well, I am at the end of my journey. I'm about to pass the baton. I'm not going over to the Jordan with you, but the Lord is going with you. I want somebody to know, you know, you may be passing the baton. You may be leaving something behind, but God is going. You may be in a moment of transition, but whatever you're leaving behind, wherever God is sending you, God is going with you. You know, he's there with you. Okay, in verse 5, he says, the Lord will deliver them to you. So he's already talking about the people in that land. Be strong, be courageous, do not be afraid. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He repeated that so many times, so many times, so many times. I can also remember a transition. As my mom is here, we've been talking, we've been reflecting. I remember in 1989 when we were all at the airport and the four younger children children was leaving with her to come to the United States. She had sold land. She had given up her job. She had left everything behind and was coming to a place where she didn't know. Okay. The older ones were staying behind and the younger ones were going. And I can remember a picture. It's in her album. And every time I, I just see that picture, I don't know that I was sensitive enough to what God was saying, but I sensed that he was saying, be strong, be courageous. And I've seen the strength in my mom. I've seen it, that he has caused her to be strong. God is faithful. Why is he talking? Why is he saying things over and over again? Because he's faithful. He's faithful. Your faithfulness stretches to all generations. This was a different generation that left Egypt. He was still faithful. That's what Psalms 119 and verse 90 says. You're faithful. Your faithfulness stretches to all generations. I am excited because my daughter is, is watching. I'm excited because generations to follow okay, has something to hold on to that the Lord has given to them. You know, um, we, sing a, we used to sing a song when I was little. It said, he never fails me yet. He never fails me yet. Jesus Christ has never failed me yet. We sang something similar to that earlier. It says, he'll never let me go or never let me down. I am so excited. I am holding on to what he's saying. I'm holding on to his words because he'll never, never fail you yet scripture repeats itself because it's the perpetual truth of god therefore repetition of said scriptures is saying what god is saying he's faithful he's saying that he's faithful he wants you to know that he's faithful he wants you to know that he'll finish what he started he wants you to know that he's alpha and omega he wants you to know that he he will keep his word in Numbers 23, 90, he said, God is not a man that he should lie. He's not a man that he should lie. He will keep his word. The next uh, scripture that I really like is in Je Jeremiah 1, uh, verse 12, where he says he will watch over his word to perform it. He will watch over his word to perform it. If you have time and you read the, the verses before that, it's a conversation. I love dialogue. I love the dialogues in the Bible. I will just search and just read dialogues in the Bible. I absolutely love them. And there was a dialogue going on between Jeremiah and God earlier, and he's giving excuses. You know, I'm too young. Some people may be saying, I'm too old. Okay, I've done all that God said to do. No, there is more. Okay, stop those excuses. He said that God touched his lips and gave him the words. He said, I'll put the words in your mouth. And then he said, I'm faithful 
to watch over the words, to tend over it like a farmer tend, tends to the seed that he planted. I'm faithful to make sure everything that I've said, every detail, every I is dotted, every T is crossed. I'm faithful to make sure every single thing. We've been listening to pastor preach about the debt and tying it in to the Passover. He's faithful to make sure every single thing is perfected in you through Christ Jesus. I'm excited today. I hope you're excited about the word of God. His repetition allows us to walk out. You know, sometimes you're teaching and you repeat, you say it and you know it, but can you apply it? Okay? When that test comes, I see my sister Jerry laughing. Can you apply it? If we change the question up, can you apply it? If a hurdle comes in the way, can you apply it? David said, your word I've hidden in my heart so I might not sin against you. Kept it. Meditate on it. You feed on it. Feed on it. Okay? So that you can apply it. You can use it. Okay? In Romans 10, 17 says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word. We have to make sure we are repeating what God is repeating. I'm not asking you to repeat nonsense. I'm not asking you to repeat, you know, things that don't need to be repeated. I repeat God's word, what God said. Speaking God, speaking Christ, okay? You speak it until it becomes. One of the examples I gave, it says, be strong, be strong, be strong. You see, David later on is saying, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So God is saying, be strong. And now we are saying, I'm strong. Paul said, in my weakness, I am strong. Say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. So this very thing that God has been telling you, now we are internalizing it and saying it. I'm strong. I can overcome anything because I know who is inside Repetition reveals God. It reveals God. That's another word, right? It reveals who God is. And I just want to read Hebrews 1, um, 1 to 3. It says, long ago, at many times, and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers. He's been speaking. He's been speaking. Speak to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. He's still speaking, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He's been speaking. Verse 3, he is the radiance. I absolutely love this word. He is the radiance of the glory of God. Just as he is the radiance, we are radiating him. I think Pastor mentioned that earlier, um, a few weeks ago. We're not reflecting. Reflecting is like you look in the mirror and you see what you see. Radiance is coming from inside. It's emitting out like radiation. It's pushing out. What is inside is Christ. So you're going to radiate him. You're going to speak him. You're going to speak what he says. All right? I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited about the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let me uh, start wrapping up by mentioning a few more examples where scriptures repeat itself. One, in name. Okay, intimacy. Intimacy. For example, Samuel, Samuel. God calling Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. Abram, Abram. We heard one earlier. Martha, Martha. I want to know you more. Come closer. I want a relationship. The Bible says some people will say, Lord, Lord. And he'll say, I don't know you. I don't know you. So he's calling you in this repetition. I believe he was calling me into knowing him more, more intimacy. Okay. In this repetition. So if you hear him calling you over, he's going to keep calling you. He's calling you closer. He wants you to come in closer to know him better, know him better. We see it in, in Peter as he questioned Peter. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? 
is calling you in. He's asking you to radiate him. He's asking you to speak him. Okay? In miracles, we see miracles repeated, several uh, miracles repeated. One of them is especially is the 5,000 uh, feeding of multitudes, the 5,000. And then right a little bit later, I don't know how many days later, but 4,000 he fed again. What is it saying? If he did it yesterday, he can do it again. Okay? If he did something big for you already, and you're like, well, he gave me the big uh, blessing already. Nothing more to come. Oh, he can do it again. He can do it again. He'll do it again. There is something more for you. Okay? More for you. Repeated promise. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He wants somebody here today to know he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. What he started, he's going to finish. He's watching over his word to complete it. Every detail, he is making sure is finished. Okay, of course, the big deal, the manifestation of the word. When it is said, I love the Christmas and the resurrection because there is so much uh, prophecy so much amazing prophecy in the birth, in the death. I'm not going to go through them because of time, but pastor had been preaching them. Prophecy in Isaiah. If you just stick with Isaiah, you'll find a lot. Okay, Prophecy on the birth of Christ, the ministry of Christ, the death of Christ. Oh, and you see it in the New Testament. I am excited today that God has given us something that is eternal life, is word to, to hold on to, to speak, to grow in. I'm excited. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I am going to close with the last scripture. John 17, verse 8. And this is from the high priestly prayer. Jesus is speaking. For I have given them the words that you gave me. And they have received them. And I've come to know the truth. We've been talking about the truth. This word is truth. That I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. So the words he got from the father, you have the imagery here of a bird feeding the young one. The same word he is putting in your mouth is given to you. Okay? His word said, you know, he's truth, he's life. John said in the beginning was the word. He's given him your, your, his whole self. He's come to do something amazing for you and he's calling you into intimacy he's calling you into knowing him he's calling you into more of him so that others will have more thank you god bless you